Hey all, Game Methuselah. I know I promised you the England trip and I want to wait a little bit on that because I want to find out if I'm going down to San Diego to Game Empire this weekend to play the bolt action release of their Korean War variant. The people at Warlord were very gracious to us in England. They gave us the grand tour of the facility, how they make the miniatures and all that, and shipped all our stuff back to the United States for free. It was really a wonderful thing, and I had a great time in England and want to talk more about England and all the things I saw, the great museums, how much I loved Bovington and Tankfest. But I'm going to find out, first of all, if I'm going to be in San Diego and let you know. And now I'll I'll hopefully do a quick video on England and give you that information a little later in the week. And hopefully you'll go down to Game Empire and check out the bolt action, whether I'm there or not. The second thing is a lot of people have been talking to me about streaming videos. And I get the idea. It's popular and it might bring me in a lot more followers and maybe even make me some money. But I got to tell you truthfully, not my main goal. I mean, I really want people out there playing. I think there's a lot of people out there who are streaming Dungeons and Dragons and streaming most likely other role playing. And the other role playing interests me. Maybe if I ever do anything, it's going to be on something other than D&D so I can show you how different game systems can work into your role playing games effectively. But what I've acquired, well, actually my wife acquired a facility in Orange County for classes that she does. And since really she only does them on Saturday and Sunday, that leaves me the rest of the week to utilize this facility as I want. It's nice because even though it's not really glamorous, it's in a really nice location, easily accessible off the 22 freeway on Harbor Boulevard near Disneyland. It's very neat. There's lots of sort of nice, inexpensive places to eat around there. Parking is free. And there are even places to stay. So if people wanted to come in from out of town, maybe for what I'm looking to do, which would be game tournaments, role-playing events, painting seminars, boot camps, maybe even doing some streaming of, oh, different types of games that, uh, that we thought maybe we would do with Matt Coville. But I think he's so busy now with all the things he's doing. He doesn't really have any time nor space for me. And, you know, I don't want to be a pain in the butt and bug him. So we'll see. But in the meantime, I would just like to get things going and get people involved in what I love, which is the actual gaming. And I think the best thing to do with that is set up events, either tournaments or Friday night role playing campaigns. And if you want to come down and stream maybe your game, maybe stream my game and post it up, maybe blog it, you know, talk about gaming. Maybe I'll just turn my camera on and running directly into YouTube and people can just sort of kind of look in and see what's happening. But when I was at the Unitarian Church meetup this past Saturday, we played Civilization and I tweeted that and we had such a fabulous time. And I said, you know, I need to run tournaments on these old games because so many of them are really great. And everyone was like, you know, if you ran tournaments on these old classic Avalon Hill games, I think we'd get a lot of people really interested. And that excited me when I had a place to actually set up and run tournaments. The other thing I would very much uh, like to do, run games. You set this up so that people can come down and bring new things down for others to see. There's a whole myriad of games that I call desert island games. You're allowed five games you get to take to a desert island if you're stuck. And some of these games are fabulous, but nobody's played them. Like Cthulhu Wars, which was a great game, still is, a fabulous game I love to play. And it has fabulous re replay value, super enjoyable, but it was a Kickstarter game and it was kind of expensive, so a lot of people have shied away from it. Star Trek Ascendancy is another great game. It tends to be a four-player game, which obviously restricts it a bit. But there's a bunch of other games I know that there are other people out there that are super passionate of. Many I've played. I'd like to get them playing. I'd like to run an upfront tournament. Get that going. I love upfront. Maybe my favorite board game ever. Surely the best Fog of War game ever produced. And I would love to have a national or international tournament on that game where people could come and get together and play this game and maybe set up a series of people learning how to play this game and like old folks like me who used to play it and love it could come and relive their youth playing these board games again in tournament style. I'd like to work on getting some kind of 
Dungeons and Dragons role playing museum thing going. And not so much a facility itself, but maybe an exhibit, something like Del Toro did at the LA Museum when he showed all the things he'd collected. I'd like to build a collection, um, really just add on to what I already have with friends of mine who have lots and maybe other people out there who would be interested in loaning their stuff to this endeavor to let people eventually see how it all started and the beauty of the figures that existed in the 70s, even 60s, that were out there when the game first started. And maybe stories and information that can be shared about my passion, which is early role playing and early painted miniatures. Now, you know I'm passionate about miniatures, but there's so much of this hobby that I think a lot of people have never seen, and I wanna push on that. So to that end, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to go ahead and post more information soon about this. If you're interested and you want to get involved, contact me and let me know via the Twitter or via my YouTube channel and, and let me know what you're interested in. If you're interested in coming down and playing a game that maybe I'm unaware of. Um, I know there were a lot of big Titan players back in the day and I know it sort of got re-released. It doesn't matter to me. I being a game slu oh sorry, a game coochie boy, I love to play everything. If you have a game that maybe I haven't played and should, I'd love to play it. So let me know. The other thing is I'm most likely going to immediately start running uh, an international role-playing campaign in Planescape. Now, the reason of this is very simple. I can run my Albion Twilight of Fae campaign, and I can run my Empire of the Petal Throne Tecumel campaign all through a Planescape aspect. We're doing that with my weekend pad group and we're having a good time with them. We've just gotten started. And it suddenly dawned on me when we were doing this, that, and I have mentioned this to you, this is one of the best ways to run a role-playing campaign because you can run games all over the place and they connect together. I would love to have a game that connects to my gaming, to your gaming, and people that maybe game with me could come game with other people. You know, back in the 70s, I set up lists and we used to put groups together of people who could role play and have these campaigns going. And there were many campaigns that could interact with each other in Southern California back in the 70s. And that's how Dungeons and Dragons really grew. It, you know, there were the Warhouse, where Steve Lucky ran games every weekend, and you could go down there and see Tim Finkus and all the crew there and play Dungeons and Dragons there. And you could then go play up in Santa Monica. And, you know, there were great things going on all the time. Go down to Caltech and play their game system. This was a fun way to play. And now they do do this, as I've mentioned with Adventure League. But the problem with Adventure League is it's very, very, very controlled because they're trying to keep a lid on it. And the other thing about it is they don't want to necessarily talk about anything that isn't necessarily official. I'd like to obviously work on that situation and get more things out there that are homebrewed, that push the boundaries of Dungeons and Dragons and all role-playing to make it better and more enjoyable for players. So we'll see. All of this I hope to get done very quickly. Most likely all my adventures I'll immediately start putting up as quick as I can get them going on my Patreon page. And I'm going to set it up so that they run on Patreon for about 30 days so that people who are supporting me, and I greatly appreciate it, and in many ways feel that I've kind of let them down because I've been so busy writing and trying to get things done that you end up not doing the things that I think excite the people and keep them interested in what you're doing. And I want to rectify that. If you obviously are not a Patreon, they'll eventually fall off in a very quick mode, like say a month, and they'll be then free to play in public on, on my YouTube channel. So you'll be able to pick them up there and, and join in on the campaign. But I wanna hear what you're doing. I want people to get passionate about this, send me information, make their own posts, make their own videos about it, start talking about a national or international Planescape campaign where eventually, like when I went to England and I went to the hobby shops there, I could go to England and get into a game that was actually part of my own campaign. That really excites me, and I hope it, it could interest you guys. So, lots to do, need to jump on it. So, until we have a chance to speak again, fight me devils, fight, for I hate peace. Game on. Hope I'll see you guys in San Diego this weekend. If not, have a great time, 
and enjoy the gaming.